it has been very interesting watching these right wingers go back and forth about this Hillary and Stephen Crowder divorce. Now, I don't know Lauren Southern and I don't really know Tim Pool either. I don't know these people. But the way Lauren Southern sounds, um, she sounds like she supports feminism. Now, when I posted her about her before, People said that she is an alt-right person and she was a traditional housewife. And then now she is on that trad wife to poverty or trad wife to single mom pipeline that I have already talked about. Anyways, um, she had talked, she had said three days ago to this man, Tim Poole, no, Crowder asked Hillary to quit her job and move to Texas to support his career. That's why he has to fund his legal opponent because she actively supported the creation of said wealth at his request. Do you think being a stay-at-home mom and wife is an important job? Is it worthless? Then this woman says to Pearl, don't you say women shouldn't be in the workforce and should be at home with their kids? Which is it, Pearl? Also, last I checked, Hillary is actively looking for a job. She said that in response to, it's called getting a job like the rest of us, Lauren. Now, a lot of these people, a lot of these women are feminists. They really are because they know that we have to work. They know that we're supposed to get paid. And if they really weren't feminists, they would be just at home, not really worried about things. But you cannot be an anti-feminist and think that women shouldn't be supported on the back end. So it's like people have got to pick a lane. If you think women should be at home and you know that it costs food to eat, I'm sorry, it costs money to eat. It costs money to have shelter. It costs money for um, everything. It costs money for extracurriculars. All of this costs money. So if you expect a woman to actively just sit at home and raise the kids, that is work. It's just not work that shows up in our retirement savings. It does not show up in our bank accounts. So that has to be subsidized somewhere. So it's going to be subsidized by the man that she is supporting. If she is supporting um, in the family business, she should have some of that money. But these right wingers like Pearl and whoever else she was talking to, Tim, act like women should not get some of that money even when they are actively supporting and working in that family business. So then Lauren went to YouTube and posted a 30 minute long video debunking some of the things that have come out about this divorce. And I did take a video of it, a screen record. So here is some of that. I even just thinking about it for more than 10 seconds and it's being spread around to some people who I really respect and that are just repeating this over and over again. So I'm not going to get into a massive commentary on the issue, but for the sake of the wider discourse, I am going to debunk some of the top two, three, four, five falsehoods around the Steven Crowder, Jared Monroe, and Hillary Crowder cases and situation going on right now. So let's just jump into this by starting with the notion that Hillary Crowder is receiving $25,000 in child support monthly right now. You first may have seen this spread by Tim Cast uh, on X. Um, but luckily, this is not something I have to spend too much time debunking because Community Notes is out here helping me out. There is no child support awarded. Child support and alimony in Texas do not get awarded until a divorce is finalized. And not to mention, Texas is one of the most difficult states to win alimony in a divorce. While it is possible to win alimony or spousal support in court, it is much more likely to receive alimony through a private contract created as part of a divorce settlement. And once again, that's not to mention that the maximum child support Hillary could receive anyways would be $2,300 for two children in the state of Texas because the law there dictates a maximum amount of net monthly income that can be used to calculate child support, and that amount is $9,200. Now, Tim and I had a bit of a back and forth on this in which he claimed Crowder shouldn't have to fund anything, not even her legal fees, because that's his money. He's the rich one, not her. But the problem with that, in my opinion, is that Hillary actively quit her job to support Stephen upon his request to build up his company and his life. She actually went and followed the trad life that they both advocate, meaning it would be pretty strange to suggest that she has no right to any of that money unless Tim or anyone else is trying to make the feminist argument that every married woman should have a backup plan and secret finances stashed in case their husband suddenly just doesn't want to show up to the birth of the ch their children, cuts them off from their accounts and hires a divorce attorney behind their back because that's what happened to Hillary. 
Should she have been secretly planning behind Stephen's back this entire time to hide money away from him that she was earning and supporting him and backing up his career, making him meals and doing his, you know, uh, uh, behind the scenes work at Ladder with Crowder? Is that what she should have been doing? Now, once again, I think this is a strange argument for traditionalists and conservatives to be making, but you can make that argument. All women should have backup accounts that they're hiding from their husbands. But uh, I think within the ideological sphere that both Hillary and particularly Stephen come from, stay-at-home mothers and wives are supposed to be considered very important and integral roles to a family uh, that contribute plenty to their success. So anyone who is claiming to be a fan of Stephen Crowder's work, a fan of the traditional family that is now coming out here on Twitter, which I'm seeing in mass and arguing, why is she asking for money? All she did was sit around. She was so useless. He earned all that money. She did nothing. I think that's pretty telling of uh, what some of your ideologies actually are. You've got this split. You've got half of conservatives that are like, we love wives. We love mothers. We think you are so important that you need to stay at home and be just contributing everything you can to the household and to the children. And then this other side who seem to be exposing themselves as just, <laughs> I don't know, thinking mothers are useless, in which case I don't know why any women would be stay-at-home moms. But that was never the side that Steven Crowder or his industry was advocating. So I cannot understand for a second how anyone could be making the suggestion that she just did nothing and deserves nothing. That's not in line with the ideology that he was promoting. And reality seems to show that uh, this is false too. As you can see on Hillary's LinkedIn page, all of the work that she did for Louder with Crowder Industries, including being a founding member of it, doing hiring, doing payroll and billing and plenty of other behind the scenes work. Yet, while Stephen had his parents on the payroll, Apparently, it seems Hillary just did this for free as a wife. Which brings me to the next debunk we have to get to. Obviously, since Hillary wasn't being paid a salary, she wasn't an employee, she was just a wife, how has she been surviving this entire time? Well, we've established that the $25,000 was not for child support, but Hillary was indeed receiving 25 grand. And it has been claimed publicly that this money is entirely just for her to splurge with. This is just her spending money, right? Crowder is paying for all lawsuits plus gives 25 grand a month to Hillary. That is the claim I've seen repeatedly. Uh, Gerald from the Louder with Crowder team has been saying this. I've had some other Louder with Crowder employees tweeting me with this information. But of course, when you delve into it deeper, it turns out it's all obfuscation from what is really going on. At the beginning of the court case, the divorce case, both Stephen and Hillary were awarded allowances of 25 grand. This is pretty standard in this kind of proceeding. However, Hillary was locked out of all of the other accounts while Stephen was not, and I do have the documents showing this. When you see the excerpts from the legal document that says Louder with Crowder is ordered to pay 25 grand, which has been making the rounds on Twitter all day with just that one highlighted section, what you have to understand is that Louder with Crowder is or was marital property and therefore the estate they are both being paid from in the divorce matter. Although this document here is not from the divorce filings. If you keep reading beyond the highlighted bit, which apparently most people on Twitter were simply incapable of doing, you'll notice Hillary Crowder quoted saying, I barely have enough money to pay my divorce attorneys, let alone the fees of this litigation. And there's the kicker. That's because there are two cases going on here. One is the divorce case, the other is a civil case. Now eventually, the court in the divorce case realized Hillary could not afford her divorce attorney and an attorney for the second case as well, and she was going into debt, which is why they ordered Stephen start paying her divorce attorney. So this is where the claim comes from, that Stephen is paying for attorney fees plus an additional 25 grand. The problem is, once again, the obvious obfuscation that implies he's paying for all attorney fees when he is not. There are two cases going on, the second of which Steven Crowder was not ordered to pay for, meaning even if the divorce was not draining Hillary's account, the civil litigation was. Especially considering Steven has a multitude of lawyers, I think he's been seen with six to seven of them walking around going into trial at once, while Hillary could barely afford one for the civil case with the $25,000 allowance per month going in and out of court constantly. If you ever wonder why I dropped out of my lawsuit against Patreon, which I launched a few years back, 
for banning me from the website for something that wasn't true. It's because the company were able to put through a motion stating that I was going to have to pay for my own legal fees and the fees of the judge involved. And that judge would cost like $5,000 an hour, which obviously I could not afford. Meanwhile, Patreon having millions and millions of dollars at their disposal to do this could, and they knew that. I think they knew damn well they couldn't win against me with real arguments, so they decided to partake in lawfare, where they just ensured that I would be drained dry and unable to continue to fight them, which is, once again, the strategy that my lawyers told me they were going with, and is the strategy that appears to be the case in this situation as well, which is where we get into, you know, at some point, the court system isn't man versus woman, and it just becomes rich versus poor. Anyone out here who thinks 25 grand a month is a lot when you're going through a lawsuit with a massive company like Louder with Crowder or with Patreon is delusional. You have no idea what you're talking about. You have never been to court against a large company, and I just don't want to hear your opinion on this issue, seriously. It's just um, completely, completely out of touch with reality. It sounds like a lot of money when you think it's just for going to the store and buying, I don't know, fruit roll-ups or something and hanging out and paying rent, but when you are going to court against a large company and they're taking you through motion after motion after motion that disappears like that let's just read through some of the court documents here between stephen and hillary that kind of show uh what's going on here in the financial realm this case is extremely litigious stephen crowder through his attorney of record has multiple depositions ordered in this matter some of which are to be conducted in california and florida travel expenses to include airfare hotel and meals will be incurred counsel for hillary crowder needs multiple depositions conducted there have been numerous discovery disputes and hearings heard in this matter with numerous discovery disputes and enforcement issues still pending the parties were ordered to mediate again for two days the first day of mediation was conducted on October 6th, 2023, and the second day of media. Okay, moving on. Steven Crowder has access and control of the majority, if not the entirety, of the assets in the parties and community property estate. Hillary Crowder does not have access to nor control of sufficient community assets to adequately prosecute her case, the disadvantage of which is particularly troubling in light of the fact that Steven Crowder has a substantial amount of community money subject to his control, a company through which he can pay his living expenses and his attorney fees and substantial income. Petitioner Hillary Crowder can show this court that respondent filed a civil action against her, her family, her entertainment attorney, and friend in cause number, etc., seeking monetary damages exceeding $1 million. Hillary Crowder does not have the financial resources to defend this civil action. I cannot stress enough that if you actually sit and read through these documents instead of seeing the few snippets being produced for the purpose of disseminating a very specific narrative, these documents are just a repeated string of Hillary Crowder and her small legal team begging the court to acknowledge they simply do not have the funds to fight this civil case. Something aside... Now I'm shifting gears. This man is preaching um, at a service about what a woman should do on her wedding night. And it is a clip, but it's just so troubling to hear these people laugh about and kind of joke in a way like a woman is just supposed to just take it and not have any autonomy. The way he's talking, um, I don't know why women stay in churches like this, but this seems very white nationalist. This seems very along the line of these traditional people. So I'm including this one as well. Let's see if you applaud this. Ladies, when you get to his wedding night, he's been planning this night his whole life. So what you need to do is stand where he tells you to stand, wear what he tells you to wear, and do what he tells you to do. You're going to make him the happiest man in the world. Sheila, who posted that video, says, if you think this is funny, you may want to ask the women in, in your life if they find you safe and kind and be humble about it and just listen. I doubt they would actually do that. But still, that's what she said. Um, David said, this isn't even his joke. I heard one of the Kaner brothers say the exact same thing at a winter retreat at Liberty University around 2009. So he's not even original with this supposed joke. The men in her replies were not particularly happy. 
This person says, I was unaware that there were Christian Karens out there. Thanks for bringing this to my attention. Only a Karen could get that upset by a playful joke that you cut off and took out of context. How about instead share Christ and God's work with people? And then Lily says, if you like what I said, I meant it. If you don't like what I said, it was a joke. She says, number one, it wasn't a joke. Number two, it says out loud that women are basically blow up dolls. Number three, it reinforces that marital grape is just fine. And then Stephen takes exception to that. The bit of humor in the message is obvious and unmistakable. That's why his audience laughs. These men do not seem to understand that we have a different sense of humor. And these jokes are not particularly funny to many women. Um, number two, it literally doesn't. The very act of making the request to women presumes they're not simply blow up dolls. They're not really making a request in this. He's basically saying that this is what you are to do. Number three, grape is the exact opposite of voluntary acts encouraged. Chet simply tells them, you are so pathetic. <laughs> just keep it simple. You are just pathetic. Chet continues with, what's also not funny is nookie marriages. Don't get married if Nookie is something you think can be completely removed from the equation. Men need to stop letting this happen and stay out of marriage. No, I don't think anyone said th that it should be something that is completely removed from the equation. What they do is um, use hyper, um, hyperbolic messages. Nobody said take it completely out. <laughs> Nobody said that. So now I want to do this really, really short clip from this man from the Daily Wire. It is a short clip. But it's just a reminder that they want to do away with no-fault divorce. They want to make sure that women are trapped in these marriages no matter what. So just put it all out there. Women are supposed to be in the home, working, self-sacrificing. We're supposed to be bang maids without autonomy. And then if things do go awry and women want to get out, these types of people want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So I'm just putting all of this together so you guys can see where these Christo fascists, forced birthers, right wingers and seller sources want us to go. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, share. If you made it this far, go ahead and hit subscribe. Public matter. I, I couldn't. It is. I care about divorce as a political fact. I think divorce should basically be outlawed <laughs> or it should be at least greatly restricted. I care about divorce in the sense that it's a public matter. I could